Goblins, yeah. goblins, goblins. Goblins, goblins, goblins. <laughs> All right. So we have some goblins versus Rackin. Second game from Saturday. How many points? Uh, 2,250 points. What's our scenario? <laughs> dominate. <laughs> and what are the dominate rules, Declan? Whoever that sinks in the middle wins. That's right. There it is. Within 12 inches of the center point wins. Okay, let's look at our uh, terrain on our table. What's in the middle? The center point. And what's under the center point? What terrain piece in purple circled there? A, a height uh, two hill. That's right. There was a height two hill. Also nestled against our uh, deployment zones, we had two forests. forests. Perfect. Light blue or some obstacles. And then on the outside, circled there's, in there's, orange. There's... There's two blocking terrains. Yes. So huge pieces of blocking terrain on the left side of the table, which effectively shrunk the table for us. I don't even know if there was room to deploy stuff to the far left of it. Maybe a tiny about a tiny amount of room, uh, but we we didn't. We said we're not going over there. And on the right, you can see there was a small barn, which was close to the table edge. Certainly didn't let. A horde fit through, probably not a regiment either, but some smaller units possibly could have. Um, and so how did that influence deployment? So you could see me down at the bottom, Adam, the green tide goblins. Um, you know, being that I wanted to get everything to the middle, I sort of deployed central, sort of back to basics for me, with a main front line and then my secondary line there. So I have my rabble, two regiments and a horde, uh, Grogger's goons, everything just ready to run right up the table. Uh, my trolls were really spread out. You could see the two bruisers and the two hordes. Kind of wanted to have some presence on that right flank. For support, uh, I've got my mob beast pack, my giant, my trombone, my mincer, ready to start, you know, coming in as a second wave attack as I'm moving forward. For shooting, once again, my spitter, my rock lobber, and you know my four individuals from left to right, I have uh, the wizard with Bane Chant, the wizard with Drain Life, Grogger, and a bigot. And then you can just see it on the right is my regiment of uh, Fleabag Riders. It's so really off the peak, sir. It is, yeah. It was, I really pushed them towards that right, right table edge. All right, my opponent up at the top is uh, Brad, the Rat King, Ratkin. Yeah. And uh, how did he deploy? Well, he really had a front line of chaff, Declan. So okay. he had four troops of scurriers, two troops of, what are those, claw shots, I think? Okay. He had three weapons teams, four hordes of shock troops, there was a mounted standard bear and a mutated rat fiend. Oops. And then on the right, he had a regiment of hack paws and a flying demon spawn. What do you think about the deployment, Declan? Uh, well... How did we do? Did it make sense? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. And I think it would be easier for your opponent to get there to, to the edge of the hill. Yeah, I think so. I because think you would so. have to go all the way around. Yeah, so there's one thing that that I, you know, I, I didn't like maybe, or, or based on terrain, I'm, I'm annoyed. So I actually won the deployment roll-off, I believe. I think I did. So, <laughs> I just, at least I remember choosing sides, and the front 10 units of Brad's army here shoot, and I chose this side where the whole frontage, except for that one forest, was was empty. There was no cover. Um, so, so maybe I should have picked the other side of the table, because uh, I'm going to get shot at as I'm running forward. So there, there's that. Um... Daddy, yeah. Does it solve your own to have shields? Yeah, some of them have <laughs> so, shields. So they will be fine. Yeah. Um, 
And then also maybe I should have just placed some units like in that forest. Maybe I shouldn't have been afraid of being hindered and just stuck them in there for cover. But, but I didn't. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know if I could complain about Brad's deployment. I think it was pretty good with yeah. with using the, the sort of chaff line and the, yeah. the heavy hitters behind it. Brad was good. Yep. All right. You ready to jump into turn one? Yeah. Okay. My only blurry picture, I promise. What I did, quite simple, moved everything forward as fast as I could. And it looked like you're winning. <laughs> I do have the most points in the middle after <laughs> Goblin turn one. Um you know, the only little thing that was annoying is my regiment of rabble on the left couldn't go full speed because they were kind of at a weird angle due to that blocking terrain. Um, the other little thing, I guess I should have mentioned it uh, based on deployment, is I usually leave a little bit of room between my units so that my individuals who are shooting, right, I've got six total fire bolts, three shots from the bigot, and five piddly shots from Grogger. I could, I could be shooting them out, but... but to try and fit all of my regiments and hordes, there was no space in between. So my shooting on turn one, I had one wizard on the left, the blurry red blob, and the bigot up on the hill, the blurryish blurry blob. They couldn't shoot anything because, you know, they, they couldn't see anything. Um, and that was bad, bad planning on my part. But... You know, I just did some regular shooting, try and take out uh, the the claw shots. I didn't like the piercing uh, shooting at me. And then the rock lobber, always go after the big flying thing. And, you know, uh, while well, I didn't do a whole heck of a load of damage, he, my rock lobber hit, which is always good. Yeah, and he did five damage. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think he's got... Uh, uh, 1618 nerves, so five by itself wouldn't take him off the table, but I could certainly do that again, maybe, and, you know, it won't be so bad. Okay. So, Ratkin turn one. What did he do? He also advanced. He did not go out the double like I did, uh, mainly because he wanted to shoot with a lot of his stuff. And I was mentioning that blocking terrain on the right. You could see, I mean, uh, I think we might have been playing it as, <coughs> sorry, as height six, but there was definitely enough room for just his demon spawn, you know, to fit through. And look where he's stuck him behind everything. Why did I move my units that way, knowing his demon spawn was just gonna fly down and turn? That was bad but placement at my 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 part. Yeah, what's up? He, but you only had one point. Right. You have, you have... So many points. But we don't score points now. We only score points at the end of the game, so it's positioning. Positioning is what's important. Uh, he had, yeah, 10 units shooting. I wasn't going to draw the arrows for everything, so I just circled what his targets were. He went after my, uh, my regiments and that one troll horde. And this is what he did. He did, I don't know, 8-ish uh, damage. I didn't record it. And 4 and 5. So... Not, not a bad round of shooting. Took one of my units off the board early on. Okay. Turn two. Once again, I moved everything forward in the middle. Uh, got those mob beasts in the front. I want to start shielding my hordes. Make sure that they stay alive the longest because they are the highest unit strength. <laughs> okay. My troll horde, I moved up. I shouldn't have done that knowing that they were a target. Hindsight again. Uh, maybe I should have left them back a little bit because he wanted to go for them. And on the right, I had put my flea bags and my troll horde on that right flank in horrible position. I said, all right, well, I can't leave them here because the demon spawns staring down the rear of the flank of both of them. Dad, well, let me do something. Yeah. But it's good cover. It was good cover, but not good cover from the demon spawn. And so, okay, uh, I said I'll, I'll make a charge with the, uh, the flea bag Riders. I was able to hit one of his uh, weapons teams right there in the middle. But my uh, Troll Horde, he purposely left his hack paws an inch out of charge range. So I could run up there and I was like, oh, maybe I'll be out of uh, 
Charge Ranger out of line of sight for the Demon Spawn. But we're going to see real soon that that is not the case. I did some sh oh. I did some shooting. I normally have another picture in there where I don't show the damage I did. Um, my shooting actually was pretty effective. I didn't have a whole lot shooting on the left, just the two wizards and and uh, Grogger. But after damaging those guys on the left the first turn, Daddy? I came around and did a little bit more damage and I was going to be able to get them off the table. Daddy, what's that smiley face there for? That is a good question. I believe there was a turn where I completely forgot to shoot with my spitters. They were... They were just being happy-go-lucky. They didn't. They wanted peace, not war, and they didn't shoot. I think it was this turn. I don't think I shot anything. I think I just forgot to. So they were just, I don't know, lounging around this turn, doing nothing. My rock labrador, though, uh, bucking the odds, hit a second turn in a row, targeting the mutant rat fiend because it couldn't see anything else, and the demon swan was too far to the right. It was out of his line of sight. So, hey, I'm happy with that. Taking some damage on his big tall stuff. And uh, you know, it's no no surprise. A uh I think it was unhindered charge. It did. it's hard to tell with this this uh angle of the picture if he clipped the woods, but it was triple attacks against the weapon team because he's a war engine. Uh and and I took that off the table. So this is what the table looks like at the end of Goblin Turn 2. What do you think? How do you think Ratkin is going to respond to this? Uh, some good damage. Probably some good damage. I, you know, I was trying to play scenario. I'm saying, I want the middle of the table. I'm going to make Brad, the Rat King, Rat King, come after me and take it from me. So I am positioned in the center of the table. What does he do? He'll come after you. He comes after me, right. So his chaff line moves forward. And I'm starting to realize, we know he did this to make space. His heavy haters are shock troop wards in the back. He wants, I think, a little bit of space so that he could start positioning. He's still biding his time. That's fine. Trolls on the right, uh, you know, uh, whew, it was a lesson learned. It was, I'm, I'm okay with throwing away units. I don't want to throw away my troll horde. If I had like a, a rabble regiment over there that I was just wasting two of his Units, you know, turn two of doing a double charge like that, sure, that's fine. Slow them down, but not my troll horde. And he's going to have a hard time surviving. I mean, it was at least a hindered charge in the front, but then uh, rear charge by that demon spawn. No bueno. The only other charge he made is his uh, mutated rat fiend went into the front of my, uh, who is that? My maw beasts. Yeah. Them. Is that the best move? I don't know. Um, maybe I would have taken him into the front of the trolls. Um, just to be a little bit further away from my counter charge, which inevitably is going to happen. Uh, but we'll see how it works out. What did he target? He's, he's taking my... My edges, the edges away, he's shooting at the uh, rabble and the trolls. Smart move, right? To He's just continuing to focus fire on the same units. And he gets the rabble off the board and he wavers the trolls. See, I should have hit those trolls, like I said. Oh boy. <clears throat> and his three combats, his three charges were all routes. Is it looking good for goblins? No. No, it is not looking good for goblins. I, goblins better do something soon. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what's coming up? Goblin turn three. So this is what it looks like at the end of turn two. This is what I have to work with. I've got a bunch of targets in front of me. Um, oh, yeah. Ignore the, the rabble and the unwavered trolls out of this picture was taken... Uh, we forgot to roll nerve for them, and so we're like, oh, wait a second, why are they still here? So there we go, boom. So this is what I do. I do a whole bunch of charges up front. My troll, or my my goons, Gargar's goons shift to the right. I don't want them to charge that uh, scurrier horde because I knew it would be, you know, I'd get them off the table for sure, but then it'd be like a double or maybe even a triple 
Man, it probably wouldn't have triple charge. It would probably have been a double charge from the shock troops. And that is what I do not want. Uh, so I shift to the right with the goons, and I'm able to bring that troll bruiser who was hiding behind there with the Gargar's goon shifted to the right. He was able to do uh, a little nimble corkscrew charge into uh, the spitters. The giant decides to take on the rat fiend monster versus monster. Oh, Daddy. Yeah. Where I don't see the giant. This is the giant right here. You can see his shoulders over that arrow. And then... Oh, I, I thought that was his head. <laughs> um, and then my rabble horde just goes into one of the weapons teams that's up there. Uh, two interesting things that I did also, just movement based. I think a good thing on the left. I talked about it last game. Don't let my individuals die unless I'm doing it on purpose. And I'm doing it on the purpose on the far left. That wizard, I at the doubled, I threw him out there. I was out of charge range from the, uh, the shock troops, I think. I think I was. I think that's longer than 12 inches, but what I did not want was to allow him to come down and turn and sort of turn the edge. So I threw that guy out there to say, you've got to go straight and just stop there. Um, you know what? Maybe he was within charge range. I don't know. I think he was, because I think they actually have a 12 inch charge range. I think he was going to be just able to catch the front of those of, of Grogger's goons. Um, so that was out there to block, um, and then it would have prevented the overrun because it was so far over. And then on the right, I turned my uh, trolls, and the troll bruiser, because I saw that the hack paws and the demon spawn were off there on the right, I'm like, I need, I need something else up here to help. So I moved that troll bruiser up there. Would you have done anything differently? Well, I would uh of move them to, to block the middle. Mm, well, yeah. You think the troll bruiser should have gone to the middle? Yeah, so to block it. That might have been a, that might have been a better choice, and I'll tell you why in a second. So I did, I did a little bit of shooting. Uh, I think the third turn in the row, look at this. Boom! The rock lobber for the third target, third hit, hit those hack paws. So that right flank isn't as much of... A, uh, a problem since he's only going to be able to charge him with the demon spawn. But look at that smiley face again. Yeah. Do you know why that smiley face is there? Because... Yeah, because they're being lazy. The be <laughs> Don't be lazy. Um, I, I didn't move them, uh, the, the spitters, and look where I positioned the troll bruiser. Right in the front of the their, their center point. Um, and so they couldn't see anything. So they didn't get to do anything this turn. Uh, how about my charges? Do you think they were good? <coughs> I don't know. I can't tell which ones were charges. Boom, look at that. Oh. Routed. Routed. I, uh, Routed. Goblins, goblins, goblins. Well, actually, it was a troll, a giant, goblins. Hi, guy. Excuse me. Yeah. What? What number was that one? I can't see it. <laughs> oh, you know, I don't know. It's probably it looks maybe like a four. I probably did like four damage because the troll bruiser, he only gets five attacks, but he was hitting the scurriers, which I think have what a three defense. That doesn't even matter defense. But uh, daddy, and then you have two fives. Yeah. So this is good. Good time to to bring up. Um, normally when I'm making my battle reports, you know, this is my fourth, so I'm like a seasoned expert now. Um. I'm able to look ahead in pictures, seeing the damage markers to understand how much damage I did. I don't actually remember the damage. This time around, Brad had these really cool damage trackers. Um, you could see them at the top center of the table, those three green cylinders that had like these little dials Excellent. that showed the numbers, and they had magnets that he could magnetize onto each base. So really cool, but... When I'm taking the pictures, the numbers are just way too small. I realized afterwards, like, you know, I didn't realize until I was looking at these days later. I'm like, wait a second. I can't see how much damage I did to these things. I know when I get them off the table, but I don't know how much damage I'm doing in intervening. So maybe I need a new method to, I don't know, hold up some fingers in front of the camera. I don't know, as I'm taking the picture. But, um, 
But yeah, so I'm doing my best job to either try and remember or think of, okay, what was the average amount of damage to to get these these units off the board? Uh, so did I actually do four, five, and five, and five? Maybe? I don't know. But, Two, you know. four, five, and five. Oh, right. So who knows? Two, four, five. All right. So here's what things look like at the end of Goblin Turn 3. And I think it was about at this time that I realized the invisible claws of the giant trap that I was sitting in just became apparent. Um, and you're going to see why right now. So this is Radkin Turn 3. On the left... I knew it was going to happen. I bought myself. What? I bought myself. Yeah. At the left, so he's I got a shock troop I... charging in from over there. In the sort of middle right, he's got a second shock troop horde charging in. And now all of a sudden, I am like, who was it? Like Custard's last stand or someone's last stand up, up on a hill. And I'm surrounded by shock troops on all sides. Also coming in on the right was that demon spawn. His four of his five or six heavy hitting units are now surrounding me with four turns of damage to go. I made a mistake and I realize it now. Um, he didn't have a whole lot of shooting left because I decided to get it all off the table. So he targets everything at the Troll Bruiser, and it's pretty unaffected. They only do five damage. They don't waver. They don't route him. Um, and I think, again, it was at this time that I'm like, wait a second. If I'm, like, taking, you know, my weakest, if I, like, lose one of my weakest units a turn, and I'm just taking some damage like this to a Troll Bruiser, which either, you know, I could, I could heal because he's regen, and I don't even know. Was I forgetting to roll? for healing for that troll horde that whole game. He stayed on the same amount of wounds the whole time. I might have been forgetting to regen, which, again, you know, if I, if I was taking damage to my units at regen, it's not that bad of a thing. Maybe I should have left all of his chaff, gunking up his shock troops and just sat in the middle of the table. That's what I've realized right now. His shock troops uh, reinforce that idea. Clearly, he makes quick work of, of the wizard on the left, and my troll whore who got double charged on the right is roasted and toasted as well. So, end of turn three, trap is set and sprung. He's got four hordes and a monster staring down at my, now what's two hordes and a, two monsters on that hill, with my spitters just, I don't know, chilling off at the bottom. Things are not looking good. I need to uh, make sure I do something here. So this is what I do. I say, okay, I should not be going after his chaff. On the left, I send Grogger's goons into his uh, shock troops. I send the giant into that Peasley standard bear because psh, I got giant giant. He's going to overrun and it's going to allow that double charge on the left. Mincer, get to work. I've got my Brew of Strength, Ravel on the right, get to work. Daddy. So two double charges on two shock troops. That's smart, right, Declan? Right. You, he, I realize that most of his army looks evil. Well, you know what? His army is evil. Yeah, most of his army is like a monster poking out the ground and all mostly black. Mm -hmm. Very astute, my boy, very astute. Um, I still have some shooting left, so uh, I'm doing a little bit of drain life just because I get more dice on the rats on the left, um, and I'm targeting the demon spawn on the right because I didn't charge it. Rock Lobber was not able to hit four turns in a row. Daddy? Yeah. How, how many damage did he do? Well, I did enough damage to waver that demon spawn. Again, not with my Rock Lobber. But I shifted my spitters, I think, and I hit him with a trombone. My trombone's finally getting into some action. I don't know. It did maybe five damage, four or five, something like that. Well, then. And then I also bane chanted successfully, 
my Rabble Horde. So they're actually a Crushing Strength 2 for this turn. I don't think it did any damage with the Drain Life on the left. What's up, dude? Why is there zero questions? Because I'm not sure. Like I said earlier, I, I couldn't see the, the damage tracker, the wound tracker. But, and also, with Drain Life, sometimes it's easy to see how much damage it's done because he also heals my units. He's draining life from bad guys and giving it to my good guys. But but that horde wasn't hurt, and that was the only thing in range, so I didn't heal anything. Maybe I did one damage, who knows, but it didn't really matter because this is how combat looks for me. Do you see any giant red flags that say routed? No. 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 My giant was not... I see one! I see one! Oh, yeah, that says wavered. So my giant was not able to take out his standard bear. He just, he, he's like, oh, I spent all of my energy fighting the giant monster. This little rat on a flea bag here, he's too hard for me. I did maybe a couple of damage. I don't know. Or I re rolled really poorly on the uh, nerve check. Doesn't matter because I did not overrun. Daddy, I thought you knocked that guy off the table. What? Which guy? The monster. Oh, the one monster I got off the table. The other one I only wavered. Um, I did I did some damage on the left. I, I didn't route or wave or anything. My Mincer with Crushing or Thunder's Charge 3. My Bane Chanted Rabble Horde, who's got 25 attacks, hitting on 5s, Crushing 2, and Vicious. Did what, like 12 damage? I think I remember there being a chance to roll something to get that uh, Shock Troop off the table, but I didn't do it. It would have been a really high roll, but I didn't. Or maybe I did even more damage and I was just right next to Inspiring because of the Demon Spawn, I didn't do it. Oh, oh yeah, look at this. So, do you see the Troll Bruiser? I'm going back a couple turns. Look where he ended up at the end of Ratkin, turn three. Kind of like directly behind that uh, Demon Spawn. And this turn, I charged into the Scurriers. And I remember even someone asking, oh, were you able to see them? Because you can move there for sure with a corkscrew, but could you see them? And I remember deciding the answer was yes, but I think this is picture evidence that I got away with some some tomfoolery here. It does not look like I could see them at all. I think Brad saw how the game was going and just threw me a bone and said, yeah, I'll let you have a magic, uh, like an omnipotent troll bruiser for the turn who could see all things and let you charge there, because guess what? Don't matter. So he let me get away with some tomfoolery and do a charge where I did. I didn't even take the scurry. The scurries wouldn't have mattered, but I didn't even take them off the board. Which one? This one right there? That's the Bane chant that I got off. So Goblin turn four. When I finally started going after some of the stuff that mattered, I did not execute. Not at all. Does not look good for Goblins. I wanted to... to drag myself out of this trap. And I don't think I did. So this is what it looks like at the end of Goblin Turn 4. Does not look does that look good? No. It looks pretty good. It looks like there's half of it the the must the who would the the this the goblins and half the other things. The rats. Yeah. I mean sure. I still have the highest unit strength in the middle. I've got units positioned to try and keep him sort of away. I mean, I know the top of the middle circle is probably underneath his shock troops at the moment. But but I see I see the angles, Declan. I see the angles and they don't look good. Look at this. So Yeah, he saying three units there. Oh yeah. So shock troops go back into the goon's on the left, he takes the flank of the giant with the shock troop, he takes the flank of... He double charges the rabble horde on the right, because he's moving his his weapon team and his scurriers out of the way. Double charge, one of them being a flank on my rats. Oh, uh, I don't have rats. My rabble. In yeah, the middle. you don't have any rats. And my troll bruiser gets a double charge from the scurriers and from those hack paws that were sitting back there. Ruh row Doesn't look good. He still has a little bit of shooting as well. Uh, I, I clearly didn't take a post-movement picture, so you're going to have to trust me. Um, and he decides to go after Grogger. Seems a little silly because he's not a scoring unit, but um, he is inspiration. 
And what does he do? I don't know. He does enough damage and he takes Grogger off of the field. Does that matter? No. Guess what? No. It does. No. Both my hordes, it gets off the table. I know he does 10 damage to uh, the... Let's stop playing with all these headphones. With the... He does 10 damage to Grogger's goons because they are a fearless 21. And I, I believe I said, oh yeah, you need to get an 11. And you know what he rolls? What? If you had to guess, what would he have rolled? An 11. He rolls an 11. I'm like, ha, insp oh no. I don't have any inspiring over there. Because he took my inspiring out with his shooting. Very smart play. Um, so he had this amazing nerve check. And it was enough. And he gets him off the table. And I didn't have any inspiring. And you know what? I completely forgot in this picture to um, to mark down the damage that was done to the giant, but trust me, it was enough to get him off the table. A flank charge, Wait, 50 attacks. Daddy, why is there a sad face there? <laughs> because I don't even, I have no clue how much damage was done. It was 75 attacks what? by the shock face. troops, hitting on fours, elite, vicious, and... Crushing one against my defense four. I'm sure it was a very large amount of damage. Let's not do any singing more. We we don't have the licensing for that music. We'll get uh, we'll get charged. Um, so at the end of turn four, am I holding the hill anymore? No. Do I have units anymore? Oy, 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 oy. Not really. So, turn five, I'm like, yeah, all right. So I'll charge at this uh, uh, sh shock troops with the mincer. You can see, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. The mincer goes into there. I'm pretty sure I shot and took the uh, that demon spawn off the table. I didn't draw any lines because you know what happens. What? At this point, we call the game. Uh, I don't think I took the shock troops off with that mincer charge, so he had... Four hard, four hordes, four hordes, uh, a troop, and he had another troop of scurriers and the regiment of hackpaws. He probably could have gotten in, certainly by turn six, because he had two turns left, and it would have been, I don't know, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 to zero point game um, against me, so we, we called it here. Uh, in the middle of turn five. What do you mean? You, you, you have so many points. Where? Where are my points? You. What was? What was the? What was the scenario? What? What did we need to do? Get in the middle. Get in the middle. At the end of the game, that's the only time it matters. Once the game ends, do I have anything in the middle anymore? No, but. Yeah, I got these guys down here, but he's. It wouldn't have mattered. But not in the middle. He's not in the middle. Yep. Okay, so, our wrap-up. Why me no good smarts? So here are my lessons learned. I got four of them. One, I fell into the trap of going after chaff. I'm not necessarily talking about the, uh, the, the shock, to shock troop smash or whatever, whatever Brad coins this term, but, but I just I was spending time and attacks going after units that ultimately didn't matter for the scenario. Troops are only one point to score. I should have let him leave all those on the table. I should have been taking off his three-point uh, shock troops. <coughs> Additionally, those are the ones that were really going to be able to hurt me, and we saw that they did hurt me. So I should have tried and moved my units up and around, maybe? I don't know. Um, I should have gone after them. My right flank was absolute waste. Poor deployment on my part. Poor execution on turn one and two. I threw away my troll horde, and I kind of depend on them to do my damage. I threw away my rabble, uh, not rabble, my flea bag riders. I mean, they took out. Was was it was it an even exchange? One flea bag rider for a weapons team? I don't think so. Uh, I mentioned earlier on that I think I picked the side of the table. You know, I think I was just like, oh, you already got your stuff on that side. I got my stuff on this side. Sure, I'll, I'll play on this side. Um, if, if, if I was really going for 
what side would be better for me because I was this is the first time I was going up against an army that had nearly as many deployments and nearly as many drops as as I did. I think Brad had 17 to my 19. And this first time I was going up against one that had so much shooting. You know, all the other times I've been up against an army with this army, they've had, you know, some wizards, some war machines, so some shooting, but not, I think, a total of 70 shots or something like that. Whoa, that's no. um, He has so much shooting. He did. He had a lot of that's shooting. So, so it doesn't fall apart more. So I think... Oh, it disappeared. Yeah, but remember, we talk, about, we talk about what we learned, not our headphones. So I think if I had been on the other side, I had some units in like the trees and behind the... the um, that obstacle, I would have had a little bit more cover. Um, and I should have just deployed a little bit better for putting my my stuff in the middle. Um, and, you know, that would have been better. And then lastly, uh, I, I think I, I, I had this as my, uh, maybe a lesson learned from the last game. It's a lesson learned from this game. Don't charge stuff that does not matter. I... The, the first trap was wasting my attacks on the chaff. First trap. The second trap is I gave his shock troops the space and the targets to charge me back and take my stuff off the table. This would have been a completely different game if I had just moved all my hordes and my chaff into the middle and I just sat there. And I just said, yeah. Your scurriers, your hack paws, your weapon seams, shoot at me. You'll get six turns of shooting. If and and you could try and move your your uh, shock troops around the table, but if I think if I'd done that, it would have been a different game. He would have taken offshore my all three of my chaff units, maybe a troll horde or something. But I think by the end of the game, there's a good chance I would have had my you know my hordes left in the table, and it would have been just a positioning game. You know, he would have been trying to attack with the shock troops, unable to because I didn't get anything off the table. And he was like, all right, let's see how much stuff I could just squeeze into the middle. Or he's going to be wasting turns, like, at the double moving his his scurriers and his weapons teams out of the way and unable to shoot when he realizes that I'm not going to let, you know, I'm not going to take his chaff off the table. And I think it would have been a really different game. So that is a viable option of moving and doing nothing. And I think that should have been my objective this time around, but it wasn't. I just, I just, I, I fell into all the traps. What are your yeah. lessons learned, Declan? What could I have done better this this game? Go into the forest and and and, and make more shooting units. I should have had more shooting units. And and go into the and go into covers. Going into cover. Maura, you caught the tail end of the game. Do you have any advice? Uh. No. Yeah, well, you didn't see the whole game, so it makes sense. Now, Declan, what is your army going to be? My army is going to be a dwarves and brotherhood. Dwarves with some brotherhood allies. So, if you had been up against this ratkin army with your dwarves, okay. your your future perfect army where you want to have dwarves and brotherhood, what would you have done? What would your battle strategy would have been? Well, all my dwarves would be my close range guys. Yeah. And all my brotherhood would have bows and arrows. Okay. So I would have, so all, I, a whole side of my army would be shooting. Ah. And a whole side would, would, be, would, would be doing damage up close. Okay. Because, and I, and so... So, because if they were all shooting, if, if when I was getting done up close, I couldn't do anything about it. But if they were all, all attacking from, from far away, I couldn't do anything either. All right. I, that probably would have been a way better battle strategy than I ended up going with. I think I was just tired. Apparently, I don't have the, uh, the endurance to go two games in a row, which I need to, to fix if I'm going to be playing in some tournaments coming up in the next couple of months. Right. No. All right. Do you have any closing remarks before we end this battle report? I no, but Daddy. Yeah. Maybe you you could make another giant. Another giant? You think I would have been better off with? Yeah. Two All right. Giants. All right. That's. 
His aunt would have done a lot of damage if he didn't get took it, taken out. Yeah, all right. That's something I could assess going forward. Thank you so much for your input. And thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next battle report. <laughs>